Oh snap, it's the two computing juggernauts finally head to head in the productivity laptop market space. This will be one for the ages. It's like Coke versus Pepsi, Ford versus Chevy, Alliance versus Horde. Alliance always wins, by the way. The M1 MacBook Air versus the 13 inch Microsoft Surface Laptop 4. Which is the better buy if you wanna get an all-in-one work computer? Let's find out. Kind of work. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. I get asked an awful lot about why do I talk about the MacBook Air so much? And, you know, not to spoil the whole video, but today, you're kind of gonna see why. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna compare these laptops using the three Ps, price, performance, and portability. And those are really the only things that matter when it comes to a computer that you need to get the job done. Gaming laptops have something different. Creative laptops have other things that I look for. But when it just boils down to getting work done, it's the three Ps. First off, the price and specs that you can get for the money when you buy these. These two laptops are pretty evenly priced at the base model, with the Surface Laptop 4 having a ton of options to customize it, with different storage, different RAM, different finishes, and you can even get different processors. The model that I've got today comes in at $999. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte solid state drive, a Ryzen 5 series processor, and it is made out of that felt like Alcantara material. You can spec this all the way up to an Intel Core i7. Yes, only Intel processors get the higher end options. 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte solid state drive, and you can get a nice shiny metal finish, and that will run you $2,200. The M1 MacBook Air starts off at around $999, or less if you buy from their refurbished website, which I highly recommend. This base model, which is the one that I own, will start off with eight gigabytes of unified memory, which is what Apple calls RAM, 256 gigabyte solid state drive, and the Apple eight core M1 processor. Since I do have the base model, I get the lower end seven core GPU with this, but that's not as important for a productivity laptop. And all MacBooks come with a metal finish. When it comes to the M1, you can spec this all the way up to 16 gigabytes of unified memory and a two terabyte solid state drive, which will run you $2,049. Wait, did Apple's top end come in at a lower price point than another computer's top end? That's it's pretty weird. Yes, it's missing 16 gigabytes of RAM and trading that for a terabyte of storage, but personally, with the way unified memory has been working for me, I'd take two terabyte solid state drive over 16 gigabytes of extra RAM any day. But Windows is optimized differently than Mac, which is not the point of today's video, so let's move on. That brings us to our next point of comparison, performance. Both computers being work computers, they actually do pretty much the same thing, just on different operating systems. I get a lot of criticism, both here and on Twitter, for not talking more about benchmark numbers. But when it comes to office workers and people that just need a computer for light tasks, benchmark numbers, they're great, but they really don't matter. We passed good enough to run our operating systems and spreadsheets like 15 years ago. A lot of people still use like five, six year old computers. So you don't necessarily need cutting edge for these applications. Though some of those virtual conferencing apps, they are resource hogs, dang. And it is going to be hard to compare apples to apples here because the MacBook is running on an ARM-based architecture while the Surface is running on a more traditional x86 architecture, which if you're not a computer nerd, that doesn't mean anything to you. So here are some quick Cinebench numbers to keep everybody cool and happy. We're all Here's some numbers, so we're all good, right? If you've been paying attention to my videos, it should come as no surprise that the M1 MacBook does much better than the Surface laptop. I'm running the six core Ryzen option, so it makes sense that the eight core processor inside the Apple does better in multi-core performance, but maybe it is surprising that that same eight core processor tops out on the single core performance too. But it's really, it's not all that surprising. The, the M1 processor, no matter how much Apple haters wish it would go away, this thing has totally revamped the middle tier laptop world, probably forever, because this gives you power in small portable machines that can only be rivaled by much larger and much more expensive Windows laptops. However, benchmark numbers aren't all that important if you spend most of your day typing. Speaking of which, let's talk about that physical performance. Both computers, as you can kind of see right now, they're roughly the same size and roughly the same shape, which I actually like a lot. The M1 MacBook Air is basically my favorite word processing machine ever made. And a lot of that has to do 
with its wedge-shaped body design. And as you can see here, the Surface laptop does a lot of the same thing. Now, when we initially unboxed it, I thought that this little lip here, I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera here, but this little lip here, I thought it would bother me and it would like leave a mark on my forearm or something. But in using this for more than a week now, I haven't had a single issue. This is actually a more comfortable typing platform than the MacBook Pro 13, but we're not comparing the MacBook Pro 13 today. If you'd like to see that, you know, leave me a comment below. When it comes to the actual keys themselves, both are absolutely great. These two are easily my favorite set of keys on a laptop to date. Both are very nice to type on. Neither is overly clicky, but they have like enough spring to them that the keys are almost like an active participant in the typing process. On both of these computers, it's very easy to get into a nice typing groove with them. I find the clackier the keys, the more you have to like physically push them around. And it's more of like a domination thing that tires my hands out and not a partnership thing. But these keys, we're partners in the typing experience here. Plus they're both evenly spaced out and you don't have to worry if you have normal sized hands that you are going to have to reach for those T's and Y's too much. But okay. Here, the happiness and teamwork part of the video ends, because while I like the keys, the bodies those two set of keys are housed in are vastly different. Let me say that again for emphasis, vastly different. And before I dig into the surface, because the, the surface is about to get beaten up here a little bit, there is a metal version that should correct this problem, and it will probably be more MacBook-like. I don't have that though, I have the felt version, remember. The keyboard flex on this Alcantara version of the Surface Laptop 4 is the worst that I've ever seen on a laptop. It's so bad. People joked on Twitter that this looked like a computer shaped trampoline when I posted an update video to my timeline. Most laptops have some kind of flex. I mean, even the little MacBook Air, if you press it hard enough, you'll see some flex in the body. And I don't mind a little bit of that. You have to save money somewhere. And sure, if you don't wanna over engineer and waste valuable product resources, you could add that engineering elsewhere. I totally get that. But this flex is so bad, it's distracting. This, I constantly get annoyed that it feels like the keys move away from me when I'm typing. And what's frustrating about this is, if the keys were also bad, I don't think I would be as grumpy about this because I could write the whole thing off as, hey, it's just a bad keyboard. I'd rather the felt version not exist if it's going to do this because as a work laptop, I'm going to be typing on this keyboard 95% of the time. It's not a gaming laptop that I'm gonna plug in and just like wazda my way around. I'm going to be using this full keyboard and if it's always going to be irritating me, that's why I, I will not recommend something like that. And I'll end it here because as a prolific typer myself and a somewhat prolific complainer, I could go on about this for much longer, but I assume nobody but me wants to hear that. Next up, we're still talking about physical performance, but we're starting to move towards portability. So let's talk port selection. And this is actually kind of funny. Normally when I talk computers, especially Windows computers, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that the Apple machine will fall behind because in their latest offerings, Apple prioritizes smallness and lightness over basically everything else. And this has led them to being destroyed in internet spaces for having a lack of basic port functionality. Well, Microsoft really wanted to take their crown here because they have even less functionality on the surface. The MacBook Air has two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Yes, it's lacking the number of ports, but those ports themselves are versatile enough that it only takes a few cables to really make it work either by itself or in a full working from home solution. The Surface Laptop 4 in all of its configurations has one USB-C and one USB-A. And that USB-C is not Thunderbolt on either processor selection. What? What? Like I said in the one week later video for the Surface, this would be so good if they only copied the ports to both sides. So if we had a USB-A and a USB-C and then a USB-A and a USB-C and we had two of each, I think that would be good enough answer and it would get my shining approval. But we only get one of each, that sucks. I've seen some comments in that previous video that a Surface dock would fix my problems, but adding a $259 dock, that's, that's not a good look. That's not a good look or a good answer. Let's talk about something that's less controversial and more happy across the board, battery life. And this is, this is another shocker because much like the Apple normally loses port selection, since the M1s have been released, they also always win on battery life. But here, surprisingly enough, it's a very close race with the Surface actually coming out in raw battery life numbers. The M1 MacBook Air has a reported 18 hours of battery life, which was and still is incredible and easily one of the best parts that I've observed in owning this laptop. The Surface Laptop 4 Ryzen Edition, the Intel has less, 
has a reported 19 hours of battery life. At that point, both are so good that I don't know that I'd make a purchasing decision based on battery life alone. I will continue to harp on this because it's so good. I no longer worry about my computer running out of juice whenever I use either of these machines. They both last long enough that unless you are running from 4 a.m. to midnight, you should be good. And that's peace of mind that you can't get anywhere else. And as a working professional, like as a project manager, peace of mind, that's that's invaluable. One disclaimer though, and a pretty big difference between Windows and Apple in general is, when you use the MacBook, you'll have the full power the computer is capable of, whether it's plugged in or not. You will take a pretty significant performance hit as soon as you unplug the Surface. But remember, that's not a Surface thing. It's not the Surface's fault, that's a Windows thing. So if you already have a Windows computer, you'll be used to this. From a portability perspective, I think the two are pretty even. Same size of displays, same physical footprint, and the same kind of battery life. And one note, I couldn't figure out any other, I couldn't figure out where in the three P's to put this. So let's talk about displays. That's a kind of like a hidden fourth P, get it? The MacBook has a 13.3 inch 2560 by 1600 retina panel that has a 227 PPI, while the Surface Laptop 4 is a 2256 by 1504 panel with 201 PPI. The MacBook Air does have a slightly brighter panel at 400 nits, while the Surface can go up to 350 nits. One positive note and a differentiator for the Surface is, it has a touchscreen. Honestly, I haven't really used it that much because I don't relish trying to get my fingerprint smudges off the display, but it does have it. If you want a touchscreen, there you go. You gotta go with the Surface. Apple doesn't have touchscreens. And the last major difference that I wanna talk about today is that the Surface Laptop 4 has Windows Hello, which is a face biometric unlocking feature that I absolutely love. This is no kidding. Such a great feature and I really wish more laptops had it. But nothing is as quick and as accurate in the laptop world as Windows Hello. I would love for Face ID to show up on the MacBooks, but if face unlocking is for you, Windows Hello is easily the best option out right now and it's so good on the Surface Laptop. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Between these two, which should you choose for your office work? Look, the M1 MacBook Air is absolutely the best portable laptop currently on the market. Nothing else comes remotely close. For the price, you get unrivaled power, an excellent screen, great battery life, small size. It's just the best option that you can get. And I wish there were other options out there. That's why I keep buying all these other laptops to compare it against. I figure eventually somebody will accidentally make a computer that's better. Statistically speaking, this can't rain forever. If you have to keep with Windows and abhor Mac OS, then I guess I could recommend the Surface 4. Its battery life is so good that I think that that could be the sales decider right there over something like an XPS or something like a Razer or other kinds of productivity laptops. This battery life is so good and it would be worth buying if this is your only extra battery life option that you're willing to go for. If typing is your thing, no look elsewhere. Look elsewhere or at least buy the metal version of this laptop if you're a typer and you love typing and you do it a lot, do not buy the felt version of the Surface Laptop 4. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's so easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and brings your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head on over to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.